It says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a beggar, a certain beggar, named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here, as in heaven, to you cannot, nor can those from there in Hades pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he, Abraham, said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Direction in our life, especially whenever we make a big decision. This morning, Charles Stanley was talking about making decisions and seeking God for your decisions. I said it's just interesting how that all worked out today. And then the next one was Andy Stanley, and Andy, his son, was talking about making decisions, and he's going to have a series on making decisions, seeking the wisdom of God. And I thought, that seems to me to be a theme that the Holy Spirit has us to look at today. How do we make decisions? What's the most important thing in our life? Have we ever repented of our sin and put our trust in Christ? Very important. We're told, by the way, uh, that, that we ought to seek God's direction. But I observe way too often that the noise and the distractions of this world cause people to delay making important and godly decisions. And you've all seen it in your family. It is heartbreaking when you see someone who just keeps putting off and putting off and putting off thinking that they have forever to make that decision and to get right with God. But the truth is, we don't know when it might be the end. Two weeks ago, one of our sons was driving on Florida, east of town, and he came upon an accident, and another driver that he knew had just struck him, a young man, 20 years old, on a bicycle. The driver was doing probably around 55 miles an hour. That's about the speed limit out there. And uh, this guy was struck on his bicycle in the middle of Florida, not on the side, but in the center. And I, it was by Lake Street where, where the Meltons live. And I was thinking he was probably going from the right side, turning into Lake Street, and didn't look back. And I've seen, I've been at more than one incident out there where someone was struck going east. That young man, I don't know his spiritual condition. But he may have thought he had a lot of time to think about spiritual things and might have just put it off and put it off. I don't know. I don't know him. I don't know who that young man is. But it is possible for people to put it off thinking they have time and it might run out now. Your time might run out before you have any idea. By the way, it's my prayer for that young man that he survives and gets another chance. I think they uh, air medevac him off in a helicopter up to uh, Riverside County Hospital in, in uh, Marin Valley. Jesus Christ, 
and you rejected him and rejected him and rejected him. And now you're seeing the Lord's in heaven, my loved ones are in heaven, but I rejected Jesus Christ until I died, and it's too late. I think the greatest torture in hell is beyond the physical. That's bad enough. But could you imagine the rest of your life realizing you're a sinner and you can't forget it and you're remembering every bad thing you ever did in heaven and that, and, and that I mean, on earth, and that's why you're in hell suffering? Can you imagine knowing that your loved ones are there and you're separated forever from them? To me, that's far worse than just the physical suffering, is to know you could have made a different choice while you were on earth. 2541, he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared, not for you, but for the devil and his angels. God did not prepare hell for you. But you can go there with the devil and his angels if you choose to reject his son. That's a choice you have to make. Your choice. Make sure that you've made the right decision and choose the path that leads to heaven and eternal life. And 